Now, last week we just started discussing the concept of professional learning and the responsibility teachers have as professionals to maintain their own professional learning. Now, as part of your teacher registration, you will need to demonstrate a level of professional learning each year. But it is the bare minimum possible. Essentially, the minimum was set for someone in a remote Queensland location where what professional learning they would be able to achieve, where they had no access to the internet and to any sort of professional development um, and quite minimum hours in terms of an expectation. Certainly far below what we would expect a professional to be able to um, develop in terms of their professional practice. So you need to consider though how you are going to sustain your own professional learning. Now here at university during your initial teacher education everything is structured around providing you with an education and supporting your learning. Once you get into schools that is much less the case. Now, generally, there'll be a couple of days a year set aside for professional learning. Um, but in the main, it will be left up to teachers to develop your own capacity. And it's fairly well recognised that that is not well done in the teaching profession. So there are a few locations that can assist you. Now, the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority QCAA is probably the main source of formal learning about the curriculum where they put on regular um, webinars and seminars around the state that you can attend that will provide information around changes and issues to do with the curriculum. So changes to the Australian curriculum, for example. Um, different approaches to assessing the, um, the curriculum. Things that the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority are particularly interested in. Of course, the better you know the curriculum and the assessment processes in the curriculum, the better you will meet their outcomes that they want to see achieved in education. But they're not at all interested in issues such as behaviour management or um, development of student um, soft skills, say the general capabilities. So these issues you'll need to find other avenues to support your professional learning around. Indeed, even general issues around pedagogy, different ways of teaching. Now, one approach to this has been for teachers to gather together and support each other in their professional learning. And these are known as professional associations. Now for digital technologies, the professional association is the Queensland Society for Information Technology in Education, or QSITE. So this is a voluntary profession, professional association where educators and teachers get together and put on um, workshops and conferences, uh, publish a magazine, and generally support one another in their professional learning. They have email lists and um, Facebook lists and or, um, groups and, and things of that nature. And so they'll discuss um, best practices in teaching digital technologies, new technologies as they arise, changes in the curriculum, all the issues that will help you become a better digital technologies teacher. Now they do though have a um, membership fee um, to manage all these processes and keep it so forth and it's around about $100 a year. But there is an initial teacher education discount of I think it's um, $14. So you can become a member early and it's also a very good way of being able to be involved in the leadership in the profession. Um, there is an award scheme whereby you can apply to receive an award. Um, it's competitive against other teachers, but not that many people apply for them. And if you're doing some reasonably good practice, you've got a reasonable good chance of uh, being recognized. And that can then lead to a national award and indeed potentially international awards. So being recognized for your practice and your approaches to teaching digital technologies. 
There's also opportunities for leadership in the management of the association, um, running your own professional development activities, being part of a local chapter and being helping organize these sorts of activities to help other teachers learn about how to use things like virtual reality or robotics kits, things of that nature. And then you can rise in, into the leadership of the organization itself and eventually then into the national organization which is made up of the presidents of all the um, state associations. Now there's also an international association. Now this has a, a very strong um, US focus, uh, but it's an interesting way of finding new ideas and approaches. Uh, they tend to have a lot more money and are able to develop much more comprehensive curriculum and resources. And they put on um, online training programs at a sort of a uh, university level type programs. They publish a whole series of magazines and um, newsletters. Uh, and again, they have a subscription fee of around about $100 Australian, $85 US for the base level. And uh, I think it's around about four or $500 um, Australian for the top level where you get a whole series of magazines. So it's not inexpensive. Um, now the other thing is with the QSite Association, you can get your school to uh, buy a membership subscription. It's known as an institutional subscription. And it covers, I think, up to three um, teachers in the school who can go along to PD events and um, get the magazines and, and things like that. That's not available for the international ones, generally. Um, so it does take a much more of a commitment to be involved at that international level. But again, it can open up some avenues to distinguish yourself in the profession and explore new ideas and approaches to teaching that may not be being explored by teachers locally. Now, the other approach around professional learning that's become very popular in recent years is utilizing social media. And there are a range of online groups, particularly using Facebook, that have arisen, that share ideas and communicate and discuss um, various issues in the teaching of digital technologies. Now, again, these are sort of managed by a group of volunteers, but there's not that much management involved. So there's no membership fees and things of that nature involved with participation in these groups. So I encourage you to um, be involved in these at least in monitoring what's happening, but eventually then also contributing your own ideas. Um, I caution you a little bit about asking for assistance with assignments. Not that I'm particularly concerned about that, but it, it can um, annoy some of the members if they think that you're just using it to gain um, ideas for an assignment. Uh, if it's a really specific, fairly esoteric question, uh, absolutely. But if it's just, I'm doing an assignment, how would you answer this um, question? That's um, a little bit more problematic. Generally, everyone on these sites are, are teachers and they know that helping you out um, in doing an assignment that way is not particularly ethical from a teacher's perspective. So they're relatively unlikely to assist you. Okay, so think about again, how you are going to maintain your professional learning as you go forth into your career. And we'll discuss these in the tutorial.